Hello, everyone. If you've been following the previous steps, so you should have a fully functional 3D slicer um, software with open doors 3D installed and the anonymized uh, patient for John Doe that comes from the SNMMI dosimetry challenge. So today we're going to do our first ever dosimetry using open doors 3D. So the first thing we need to do is to add DICOM data to select because it's already in the DICOM database. We need to select that patient, John Doe, and then load it. So that is going to be very quick. And now you can see that we have in the, we will have in the left uh, window, the eight files for uh, CT and for spec images. So now we're going to leave uh, slicer, 3D slicer extension and go directly to open those 3D. So we select the open those 3D extension in radiotherapy and here we go. So we have the first uh, panel, the welcome panel of open those 3D. So what we need to do, we need to check it's version one, it's fine, and we need to launch the initialization. So what we can see here is we have by default the right uh, isotope, but it doesn't really matter because it, when we do the initialization, it's going to check which isotope this is. You can see here we have a default camera factor, sensitivity factor. In fact, it's not a good one uh, because these are quantified images. Again, that's going to be informed uh, automatically. And so should the administered activity and the injection time. But if you click initialization, if there is something wrong, and you can see it here, uh, no injected activity or injection time was found in the DICOM header, please enter a correct value. So because I've been downloading the file that informs uh, the administered activity in that specific patient, I know it is 7.2 uh, gigabec. And now I can launch the initialization process. I've been selecting by default the absorb dose rate workflow. So what the software does is first is resampling all the images. So it's resampling the uh, CT images at the special sampling of the spec images. Then it's, uh, so it's creating new files. It's putting that in very specific folder We'll see in another video the different folders and different files that are being created at every step of Open Those 3D. So now we have four time points, and uh, so the resampling is uh, almost finished. There's a rescaling, so we're moving from uh, counter activity and from uh, outfield to density, and the initialization step is done. So now what we need to do is to register images. So for the sake of the demonstration, we're going to select rigid uh, registration and we select the reference image here, the CT at four hour and we execute. So what it will do, it's going to try to register the free over CT to the CT of uh, acquired at day zero four hours. And you see it's uh, fairly quick because it's a rigid transformation, obviously, and that is performed on the whole field of view. So you really have to be careful. So when this is done, normally you should check transform and there will be a specific video on how to check transform. Uh, but for the sake of the first use of open doors 3D, we will assume that the transform are okay. So you can see it's done. So that allows you to do the absorb dose rate calculation. You could select the free algorithm. Um, let's say we select FFT convolution. If we do that, at the first pass, that will uh, download and install and generate uh, those uh, DVKs and voxel S value. So uh, if you already have that in your database, which is the case for me, it does the convolution on the spot and that is very, very fast. So it's applied with density correction by default. So what I've been doing here is doing the absorb dose calculation at every time point. Okay, so we have registered images. So what we need to do now is to do segmentation.
So we are going to do an automatic um, segmentation. And it means that the software is going to launch Total Segmentator, and it's going to segment on the reference image. So four hours, as you can see here, is going to segment predefined volumes. And here we have a spleen, we have a liver, we have uh, three vertebrae, L2, L3, L4, for bone marrow dosimetry, and I think you have a spleen also. These preset list of volume of interest can be defined for every radiopharmaceutical. We'll see later how to do that. So it's interesting because you just click a button and thanks to Total Segmentator, you're going to have your uh, segmented volumes automatically on the reference image. As you can imagine, it takes a while, but it's not so long, in fact, compared to the work it is doing. Also, something to bear in mind is that Total Segmentator is very powerful, and I think it has a, a, a list of uh, more than 100 uh, tissue and organs that can be defined. So you have to be very careful not to select all of them, because otherwise it would take forever to, to perform the segmentation. Obviously, having a GPU and, uh, is going to help you a lot. Uh, I don't have one, so I have a powerful uh, laptop, but not uh, great, you know, and uh, here we go. So it's uh, already done. And uh, so it's uh, processing the uh, segmentation. And here we go. So if I want to have a look at the segmented organ, I just click here and you see, here we go. So I've got the liver, I've got the two kidneys, I've got the spleen, and I've got bone marrow that's been extracted from L2, L3, L4, and so we only have bone marrow here. And uh, segmentations are fine, but I remember it's been done only on one time point at four hours. So we have to propagate segmentation. And we do that, uh, propagate at all the time points. And because the images are registered, we can propagate the segmentation using that transformation. So here we go. And we can now have time integration. So we generate the absorbed dose rate table. So remember, we have the absorbed dose rate computed at every time point for the whole field of view. So what it does here is just selecting the volume of interest at every time point and extract to get the average absorbed dose rate in each volume of interest. So here you have what that plotted. And so it reminds you it's FFT convolution with density correction on, and you've got the different files. So you can see here it's a lever, here is the spleen, here it's the right kidney, here it's the left kidney, and you have a bone marrow at the bottom here. And you can see here that it's already fitted. So we're going to see that more if we integrate the absorbed dose rate table, we have a result. And the result is the list of volume of interest, the mass of the volume of interest, the absorbed dose in gray, in the volume of interest. The standard deviation is the standard deviation on the feet, based on the feet. When you have a value, it's because it passed all the quality criteria. If you don't, then it didn't, okay? Here you have a fit function that's been used, and that's using the new fit approach. And uh, you've been doing your, and you've got here, the last column is that of the percentage of extrapolation on the, uh, the curve. So what is being extrapolated after the last time point? And you can see here that it can be quite, quite uh, high. You know, 60% of the absorbed dose to the spleen has actually been extrapolated after the last time point. So uh, with that, you've been doing your first uh, dosimetry using Open Dose 3D. So there's a lot of things that need to be done now. For example, we have to do the dosimetry of a tumor and we have uh, the liver we have here is a total liver. So we have to generate healthy liver and uh, liver uh, tumors in the liver. And we'll see that in uh, a future video. And with that, I thank you for your attention.